significant national civil holiday, the May the 3rd Constitution Day. Because of the Easter holiday scheduled here in Cyprus, our celebration is taking place on May the 4th. And I do thank you all for taking the time to join us. 225 years ago, on May the 3rd, 1791, the first Polish constitution was declared. Not just a milestone in Polish history, it was the first of its type in Europe, following on the United States Constitution of 1787 widely recognized as one of the most progressive documents of its time. For both, the main the third constitution signifies the spiritual and moral rebirth of the nation. Down the years, it remained a national symbol of all that good and enlightened in Polish history and culture. It served as a beacon during the 123 years of Poland's partition by the neighboring states, helping keep alive the nation's hopes for regaining independence, the people's sense of national identity and pride. With independence restored in 1918, May the 3rd was declared the nation's primary public holiday only to be suspended during the post-war years of the People's Republic of Poland. It was re-established after the fall of communism. The ideas and values invoked by the Third May Constitution have helped to build the peace and prosperity that Poland enjoys today and underlie our membership of the European Union, our place among the leaders in economic growth in Europe and our role in NATO. In this context, I would like to mention two important international events that are going to take place this year. The first one is the NATO summit that Poland is going to host in Warsaw this July 8, 9, the 27th summit since the uh, Collective Defense Pact establishment in 1949. Later that month, Poland will also host a five-day visit by Pope Francis, who will attend the World Youth Day 2016 celebrations in Krakow. Over a million of young people from all over the world are expected to visit the birthplace and homeland of the Polish Pope, St. John Paul II, who was the founder of the event in 1986. This year, Poland and Cyprus celebrate the 55th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. The friendly ties between our two countries that were formalized then continue to go from strength to strength, especially in the context of our even closer alignment as we pursue common interests as EU members. Polish and Cypriot government officials collaborate regularly at both the bilateral and international levels, jointly shaping mutual beneficial policies. I would like to take this opportunity and thank you, Minister Kasovides, for your personal engagement and interest in developing our bilateral relations. Your presence here tonight is much appreciated as further proof of this commitment. Just as we witness a growing number of tourists from Poland visiting this beautiful country, so two more and more Cypriots from across the island travel to Poland for business, cultural events, or to meet up with friends. The Polish city of Wrocław, being the European capital of culture this year, and with Paphos preparing to hold the title in 2017, there are many more reasons to continue meeting and exploring the rich culture, history, and tradition of our respective countries. Poland has watched with sympathy and with admiration as Cyprus has coped with these recent difficult years of financial struggle and crisis. We know that it has not been easy. We welcome the news of your exit from the bailout program. We applaud and congratulate you on the hard work success. We support two leaders and they are dedicated teams 
in the ongoing negotiations for a solution and a settlement, in the hope that the next time we meet to celebrate the Polish holiday. Um, for his uh, and his uh, wives and families, uh, now let me also salute the Amici Quartet, comprising musicians of a Polish and Cypriot origin, who are entertaining us this evening. Once again, thank you very much for being uh, with us tonight, and Minister, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Ambassador of the Republic of Poland, Mrs. Barbara Tuke Eresinska, dear Honorary Consul General of Poland, Mr. Lukis Papadilipo, distinguished ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen. Constitution Day marks the adoption of Poland's first constitution on 3rd May. 1791, one of the oldest constitutions in the world. The fact that the Polish people were among the first to adopt a constitution embodying Jean-Jacques Rousseau's ideas is an attestation of a nation which earlier on not only endorsed the ideals of democracy, freedom and human rights, but also inscribe them in a legally binding text. These values are shared between our two peoples and are the very foundations of our country's relations. Our historical and cultural ties date long before Cyprus's independence. Historians have recorded contacts between our peoples from the time when the Lusinian King Peter I of Cyprus visited Krakow in 1364, while Polish travelers used Cyprus as a stepping stone in their journey to the Holy Land. Our relations were further solidified during the Second World War, when the Cypriot and Polish people fought together with the Allied forces to defend democracy and freedom. In fact, there are many testimonies of Cypriot volunteers imprisoned by the Germans in Poland while Polish refugees found temporary refuge in Cyprus. Our shared commitment to knowing our past brought us closer as Polish archaeologists have been involved in excavations on Cyprus at the site of ancient Neapathos, Katopathos, since 1965. The year 2015 marked the 50th anniversary of Polish excavations, which was commemorated with an exhibition organized by the Cypriot Department of Antiquities and the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology of the University of Warsaw, and which presented to the public for the first time a large part of the results of half a century of archaeological investigations of the Polish archaeological mission in the city of Paphos. Our bonds have been further enriched through our people-to-people -people contacts, Thousands of Cypriot students have studied in Poland, while the ever-growing Polish community and hundreds of active Polish businesses in Cyprus contribute not only to the Cypriot economy, but also to the strengthening of our cultural and economic ties. Furthermore, our traditionally friendly relations have been enhanced through our accession to the European Union in 2004, while our cooperation was further broadened through our joint trio presidency of the EU Council in 2011-2012. Last but not least, it is important to express our appreciation for Poland's 
principal support to the efforts to find a just and viable settlement to the Cyprus problem, which will end the Turkish occupation and reunify our island. Dear friends, our historical relations and our common European culture, her cultural heritage are solid foundations for further strengthening our cooperation in the future, particularly in the face of great global challenges which require our joint response. Before closing, allow me to congratulate and extend my best wishes to the government and the people of the Republic of Poland and to personally thank you, Ambassador Barbara Tuke Eresinska, as well as Mr. Lukis Papavilipu, the Honorary Consul General of Poland, for your hard work towards the enhancement of the cooperation between our two countries.